So in this video, I want to look at the topic of functions and reusability. What does it mean to call a function multiple times and why might you do that? <laughs> and um, so to illustrate that, I want to start with uh, this particular example. Now this example is from the book Getting Started with uh, P5JS. It's, a, um, um, it's by Lauren McCarthy and based on the Getting Started with Processing book by Casey Reese and Ben Fry. So you can, if you're looking for an additional resource, that's a great one for you and there's many more great examples like this one. The reason why I'm using this example is, look here, so this robot creature thing is a rather elaborate design. It involves a whole bunch of circles, a rectangle, a bunch of lines, maybe some dots, I don't know, lots of lines of code. A lot. So you can imagine if you, knowing what you might have known a day or two ago or whenever you, before you watch this video, to, to draw that robot design four times, you would have to, um, there's so much that you would have to do, you would have to have all of that code for the entire design four times and your code would get very, very long. So there's got to be a better way, right? If you could just figure out what it means to draw that robot, package that into a function, you could call that function multiple times. And then you could think of what are the parameters by which that design can be altered or changed. For example, one parameter is where is it on the screen? What's the sort of x, y of the center of the robot? Another might be its neck length or its body length. So you can see each one of these robots is slightly different. And if you look at the code, the draw robot function is called four times with four arguments. And I'm guessing they are loca x location, y location, neck length, body length. Something like that. I guess I've looked at this before, so I'm not just totally guessing, but you get the idea. So this is essentially uh, what I want to look at in this video. I'm going to talk through the pieces of how you define and call a function when there are arguments, and then um, kind of build a much simpler, less visually interesting version of something like this. Um, okay, so, so let's come back over here for a second, and let's imagine something different. Let's say you were going to build uh, a flower. You're, uh, and it might be, you know, something like this. It might be like a rectangle. I don't know what I'm doing here. I was trying to draw a flower. This is pathetic. So the point is, let's say you wanted to, do, to have a flower. So let's think about what might be the parameters for this flower. And I don't know what I'm doing here, but um, the parameters might be uh, location, right? We can think of the x, y location. Let's be really simple about this. And let's just think we're not actually going to uh, number of petals. So we need an x, y location and how many petals should appear on the flower. So we know before that the syntax for defining a function is function, the name of the function, I will call it flower, and then open and close parentheses. Now when, uh, when we looked at the setup function and draw function, those never had any arguments. You never say setup with this argument or draw with this argument. But with the robot function you do, you say draw the robot at this location with this neck length, with this body length. Here I want to say draw this flower at this x and this y with this number of petals, which means the, um, the, you need to put something here. And the things that we put in between these parentheses are known as parameters. They are the parameters by which we define how that flower is drawn, or really how that function is executed. And those parameters are essentially variables. So I can put, I can, and I can, it's up to me to name them. I'm going to have a, a, an x, a y, and a variable called petals. So those variables, they, the names for those variables go in between those parentheses separated by commas. And then I can start to use them. For example, I can say ellipse, draw an ellipse at that x, y, uh, you know, with some width and height. And then maybe uh, the petals, the number of petals, I'm going to use in some sort of for loop. I don't know, I'm like imagining some complex scenario now where I'm rotating around and drawing a bunch of circles. But you can see that the x and the y are used here in the ellipse function. The variable petals is used here in this for loop. So what these, variable, what these parameters are, they're essentially variables that are local to this function. It's as if at the top of the function I said var x, var y, var petals. The question is, when, uh, when we looked at variables, we said, okay, well, you have a variable, you need to declare it, var x. Well, this is like declaring it, declaring it as a parameter to this function x. And then you need to initialize it, var x equals 0 or var x equals 200. So where does x get its initial value? And this is the new piece here. 
x, y, and pedals get their initial value from where you call the function. So if I were to say flowers, 200, comma, 100, comma, 10, it's the equivalent of saying here, I'm not saying this, var x equals 200. So that's not what we're writing, because 200 goes into x, 100 goes into y, 10 goes into petals. And by the way, these, uh, uh, these are what are known as arguments. So the, the, uh, the terminology, it's easy to confuse these, and you don't have to worry about this too much because you know, the program's not going to care what you're, what you're calling what to your friends and you're talking about your code. But the, the variables that you define in the parentheses in the function de definition, those are, those are called parameters. They're the parameters to the function, and the arguments are the things that get passed into the parameters. 200, 100, comma 10. And by the way, this is just like, you know, this is just how P5 works, right? When you say ellipse, you say x, y, a width, and a height. And then the ellipse function is defined somewhere, function, ellipse, x, y, w, h, something like that. So, um, so and, and the, the wonderful thing here, and I, by the way, I wrote flowers, this is flower, flower. The wonderful thing here is once you've figured out this elaborate code for drawing this elaborate, beautiful, wonderful flower design, you can then have more than one on the screen. So you could say now flower, 300 comma 50 comma 20. So you have a flower in a different place with a different number of petals. So this is essentially the exercise that I think you should try for yourself is build yourself some kind of interesting design. See if you can give that design parameters, define it in a function, and call that function multiple times. Uh, and let's come over here and let's look at just kind of doing that quickly in an example. Uh, yeah, we've got, we've, I've, I've gone up to my self-enforced 10-minute limit. So let's look at this. This is, again, uh, I call this the lollipop. Uh, it's, I'm trying to do something just very simple here. So this is just a single design. It involves both a rectangle and an ellipse. Uh, so now what I would like to do is write a function, call it lollipop. I hope I spelled that right. I'm going to put this code just right there inside the lollipop function, okay? And I'm going to run it. Okay, of course, we don't see anything because all I did was define this function. I didn't actually call it. So the next thing that I'm going to do is call the function. And now you see, there's the I'm flickering, which is not good. <laughs> yeah, I'm back. Hopefully I fixed that camera problem. So what I, what I have here is I just, I, I have what I did before in the previous video, which I just took a chunk of code, put it in a function, I'm calling that function, and then when I run it, it executes the function. But the point of what I want to do right now is add parameters to this function. And just to be <laughs> overly simplistic, I'm going to give this three parameters, an x location, a y location, and a size of the lollipop thing itself. So the three parameters need to go inside the parentheses as variables. An x location, a y location, and uh, because I'm the least creative person ever, I'm just going to call this diameter. So diameter it meaning the diameter of that circle. So we know the ellipse, instead of saying 100, I want to use the variable diameter. The, uh, the ellipse itself should be at the x and y location, and the rectangle itself should also be at the x and y location, but I'm going to say minus 10 here because that's helping me just, the rectangle is 20 pixels wide, I'm going to center it a little bit over. So now, if I run this, first of all, I'm going to get a, an argument, uh, I mean, sorry, an argument, an error, which uh, if you read down here, it's going to say, it can't. well, if my font is too big and I'm failing, let's see if I can, right? It says, looks like an ellipse received an empty variable, blah, blah, blah. So it can't figure out what to do because I called lollipop without the proper per arguments. And so it doesn't know what x is and it's trying to call ellipse, but it ellipse with an x, but the x is undefined. So this is going to cause problems. If your arguments if you don't match the parameters, things will break. There's all sorts of clever ways around that, but for right now, if I've got three parameters, I want to have three arguments here. So I want to have the lollipop at, say, 100, comma 100, with a diameter of 50. And you can see there's a lollipop. And then if I want to have this line of code again at you know, 300, comma 200, with 150 diameter, there, now I have two lollipops. And you can see <laughs> this shows how untalented I am in that, uh, you know, that's why I had to pull that beautiful, interesting, intricate robot example. But you see the point here. You have a function. I've defined a function. I made it up. It's called lollipop. It's my own. It's my own function. It takes three arguments. I can do whatever I want with those arguments, 
execute code, execute drawing stuff, and I can call that function then multiple times in different places. So I think this is hopefully a useful exercise for you to try something similar. Hopefully you have more talent than I do. It can come up with something uh, different than this uh, pathetic looking lollipop. Uh, and uh, I have two more uh, videos that I want to make. One will look at a function that returns a value, which is a key thing. And the other thing I want to do, which is a little bit crazy, is look at what happens if I put a function inside an object. Uh, okay, so uh, I will see you in the next video. I won't see you. I would like to see you. Goodbye. Oh, I can't stop here. I have to stop here.